Hello, this is Karen Johnson, and you are about to watch one in a series of wonderful historical videos of Proctor's uh, history. We have today with us Richard Loveridge from the Proctor's staff, and he is an exciting person you're going to really enjoy hearing from. Today, for the record, is Friday, October 9th, 2015, and Richard, we're so glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here, Karen. Thank you. Tell me first a little bit about your background. Uh, okay, um, born in New York City. I was very interested in photography and illustration as a child, and science, uh, but I couldn't do math very well, so <laughs> I went more towards the arts. And I attended uh, Parsons School of Design in New York City and studied under uh, Bert Stern, the, one of the pillars of modern advertising photography. Left school a little early to work at a fa top fashion studio, um, mid-range work, but we worked six days a week and I cut my teeth and learned an awful lot very quickly. For which we benefit, certainly. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm still doing photography to this day for Proctor's, so In I fact, really just before it. the show, you were walking around taking pictures. Yes, yes. And that's commonly how we see you. Well, you know, I adore the new social media era and the way that pictures can move that liquidly around and it's just so I'm this is a a new renaissance for me because I've always liked sharing my work so so today what's the subject uh, today the subject I'm, I'm around apostrophe cafe because we're installing a neon sign a very beautiful neon sign that was made by Olson company who actually worked on our marquee outside mm -hmm. many other projects here many, many other signage projects and identity projects. So when you first came, Philip Morris had decided through some method that he wasn't going to keep the apostrophe in Proctor's and <laughs> yes. the historical committee took yes. great offense to it. But it was part of the rebranding of the theater which you've been intimately involved with. So tell us, before we get into the whole rebranding, tell us a little bit about apostrophe. Well, it's very interesting because um, it, this is a similar conversation to like photo retouching. You know, people say this is this new horror with Photoshop when it, when it all, had always been done. And when I look back in some of the old materials, the apostrophe was in and out in some way. So even, even back then, I don't think the urge to have it in was quite as strong. It was more done, you know, for obvious reasons, for possession and convenience. Now the possession thing doesn't make a great deal of sense anymore since there's, that's not the company. And we also dropped the word theater for the most part, it's just Proctor's. And incidentally, an awful lot of newspapers haven't figured that out yet. You know, newspapers move slowly. I was a, I'm a newspaper person as well. I was 10 years at the Times Union, and as a, when I was very young, I worked at Newsweek magazine, so mm -hmm. I have a newsman's blood, and my uh, editors are a bit squirrely, ah, emergency vehicles. Um, an interesting side note on the apostrophe, I remember meeting with you guys, with the Historic Committee, and saying, I'll do my very best to give the apostrophe back to you someday. So when the naming rights came up for the restaurant, I threw in only one word, apostrophe, the apostrophe <laughs> restaurant or the apostrophe cafe. It went up, it went down, Philip was given many other suggestions that were perhaps cuter and friendlier, or different or more food oriented. And in the very, very end, Philip, Philip looked at the pile of names and it was a lot of suspense, and I remember the email going out. He said, uh, we're sticking with apostrophe. Mm -hmm. So I was very happy with that because I think it's cute, and I think it does, it leads to questions. And I think we're the only apostrophe restaurant in the world outside of Australia. There's one in Australia as well. You've probably been checking that on I, social I do. media. I absolutely do, <laughs> yeah. So when you, uh, when you came here, you'd been, when did you come to practice? I came here in uh, basically like January 2nd, uh, 2007, which started right okay. there. So you're getting to be an old timer. Very much so, yeah. <laughs> I was a, a decade at the Times Union and going on a decade here, so. That's great. Yes. And when you first started, you were doing a l just about everything, I mean. A, lo a little history, right? When I started here, we had the 440 building up the block as well. And that's where our offices were because we were under renovation here. And I had the only private office. I came in and I had a little box that became a, it was one of the mini dressing room off the little theater there that were, where everyone else sat in their uh, cubicles. And I don't think I met 
any of the other employees to a substantial degree except for IT people for six months or eight months because there was just so much to do and it was very nose to the grindstone and we had a lot of you know there was branding that needed to be done and things that needed to be uh, pulled together our arcade was in the picture frames now that we're very familiar with they were just eight by ten pictures with push pins it was it was almost the 1950s in the building mm -hmm. so all that needed to happen and happen very quickly because not only my desire or our desire but you know modern touring Broadway was knocking on the door and they required all these changes uh, so we were there with them we were prepared we went from sending posters out to having them printed to buying our own large-scale a poster printer then we bought our own digital presses downstairs to print things like playbills that we've now print for Capital Repertory Theater. And we're actually a, very much a power user, putting more than a million impressions on the big machine a year. So we're up there. Wow. Yeah, it's a very, we are, we're quite an operation. So not only did we bring a lot of activities in house, mm -hmm. but we were very interested in how our image projected. Absolutely. So what was your thinking about that? Well. The most important thing is that you be resolute and that you be sturdy, attractive, of course, but that can be overplayed. We certainly kept the old font uh, or a version of the old font, which is Palatino, which is a very lovely font. It's the one, it's one that people recognize because it has a P that doesn't close, oh. which is a very unusual feature in a These font. These are hot tips for people. Yeah, it's very, <laughs> right when you see TV that show. unclosed P, it pretty much means Palatino. And uh, it's a classy font, it's a beautiful font. So mm -hmm. I had no desire to get rid of that. We mixed it with the, it was Philip's desire. To, I was, we were playing around with the in Proctors, at Proctors, and I remember him standing over my shoulder and it just happened right there. And it's been, it's a brand now that's very sturdy. It has use, it has become an expandable brand. We now have at the Rep. Mm -hmm. We now have at UPH, Universal Preservation Hall in Saratoga, which is really happening as we speak just finished the case book for that. I'm very proud of working with Justin, our uh, grants person. And it's, uh, it allowed us to grow, it allowed us to have a commonality between new products without putting the word proctors on everything, which of course, in the case of a place with history, just seems a bit heavy handed, and in some other cases, just seems arbitrary. So now it's kind of the at that holds it together. And, and the at is the computer at. It's, it isn't I the mean, computer I mean, I don't know what, it isn't what the, is it's it? It's just the word AT. It's the oh. word AT in a little box, and it follows it around. So when you see Lion King at Proctor's, it's always at the at. It's kind of a cute little I'm going to have to look at it more closely. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, for people, um, again, it's sturdy. People were easily recognizable. We're actually, given the fact that it's so strong, we're quite flexible about it. You don't need to use it in our traditional color. We have styles for our logo use, but they're not incredibly strict because I, we believe it is that strong. It's, it holds up very well. So when you want someone else or allow someone else to use your yeah. logo, what, what is really involved in communicating to them? Besides crying? <laughs> because they didn't do it right? <laughs> People generally don't do it <laughs> okay, right. So. So, but it's mostly the smaller acts. Big Broadway knows how to follow rules. We follow their rules. Most of the design, there are two artists that work with me. We've had a wonderful string of artists. I was completely by myself for quite a long time. I hired an artist. We're so busy, we work almost autonomously from one another, uh, uh, between one another. We, we get together first thing in the morning, we look at tickets, which were computerized art ticket system, and there is enough work to keep three people completely busy every day of the week and many hours afterwards. So um, when Broadway, Broadway is, we'll go back to the artist for just a second because it illustrates an interesting point. When, you, when someone's hired in this town as an artist at an agency, they might just work for a local beer shop, you know, and that's it. So they can work there for 10 years, they may end up with a BMW, but it's very difficult to think of where they'd get their next job. For young artists working at Proctor's, they're basically plugging into New York City agencies from day one. They're working with Lion King, they're working with Wicked, they're working with Book of Mormon. So they're working on national, international grade standards, uh, expectations, uh, professionalism, um, legalities even in many cases. And that's what they walk into the first day. That's something that doesn't happen for most people here during their entire careers as artists. So we're very proud of the artists that we have and we know when they walk out the door, they're, they can go anywhere. So when Broadway 
when you're working with yep. a Broadway show and promotion, talk a little bit about what physically do you get? Well, and, they, and what do you do with it? Right. Well, they're very. Um, they have many, many pages uh, in PDFs and on websites and of standards and the things that you can use, and they have every single design imaginable except for the one they just asked you for. So, <laughs> you, so you have to be able to look at what they have, look at maybe two different pieces, make an interpretation and say, I think given the, stand, the size that they would like this piece, I think I should mix these elements. You work with your account executive, Broadway account executive, ask him his opinion if he's had any experience. You come to me, the creative director, have we heard anything about this? And then you just try your best shot. And again, you're really part of that New York City agency and, and modern technology. And so when do you start to talking to people? Uh, right away. <laughs> it just happens right away. Some of them are very easygoing and they're, oh, thank you very much. Great adaptation. Other, other folks, they just slap you with the, like, you know, dueling glove and say, you're an idiot. That's terrible. That's a terrible, you know, it's, it, it's all over the map. But it's, the main thing is that it's very, we call it grown up design. It's not like you're sitting down with a pen and, you know, a pen and paper and trying to figure something out. It has nothing to do with that. It's about standards, legalities. Uh, but again, always, you're an artist. Proportions, color, where things go. So since you've come to Proctor's, what have the changes in technology meant to, to how you do your job? Well, um, yeah, that's really important as well. Nothing has changed. It's merely wickedly improved, except for social media, of course, that did change a great deal. Everything has just improved. Things that took me the whole day because people didn't understand you needed a big picture because you have a big picture frame. I mean, it's quite literally that simple. That's where we were when I got here. I would spend my much of my time on the telephone saying, no, 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 we have all of these premium display options here in the building, and you're sending me a piece of art that can be no bigger than this. And there were amazingly, even in New York City and other places, there were people who were not trained to understand that at this time. Now people are, you know, you're dealing with professionals up and down. So there's a lot less of that nonsense conversation. So technology's gotten better, people have gotten smarter, the hires have gotten smarter. Social media came in, which for a theater like us changed, it changed the game in ways that um, are hardly, you cannot over, over uh, exaggerate the changes. You know, um, the, f the field before was what? You put ad television, radio, print, and now they're all just begging at the counter because social media is more precise, mm -hmm. it's more targeted. All the, sales, all the sales pitches made to all of us our entire careers, social media does most of them much better. And cheaper. And, and cheaper, well, cheaper because you're doing it better. You know, it's not cheaper in a reality, but it's cheaper because it's more focused. So about how many people are on the, Proct let's say, Proctor's Facebook page? or um, it's, We have a, a good number, we're over 20,000. The, the cool part for us and the, that I'm very proud of is that we hit numbers like 3,000 far faster than anyone in the country did. Everyone in the country, um, I would go to a conference and people would be talking about how to monetize it and whether or not they should be on Facebook. That's how ridiculous it was. We identified immediately. It was uh, Philip and um, uh, Peter Hughes, um, our Broadway account executive. We knew right away that this was just the kind of thing that Proctors should be doing. We love our patrons. We have a very personal relationship with them. It was, it was a gift to us. We didn't think about them simply as units to make money from. We figured that if people are on the corner talking, we want them talking about us, and the money would come along. And so things are a little more sophisticated now. But mm -hmm. we still work from that basic, we have a person whose full-time job is nearly just doing web things, and, but we're still, we're a place to go for news about the industry that you love and the theater that you love. And we're, it's a very positive experience. We get incredibly little negativity, which is very unusual. The web right. we, People love Proctors, it's quite clear. So if, if our listeners um, mm -hmm. happen to go on our website, right. it's proctors.org. That's right. And if we can just make a very important disclaimer, there are a lot of things that have named themselves proctors that are sure. scalping tickets. Oh, of course. And many, so, you know, well, I raised my hand at a different convention. I said, so what I tell people is if you came onto our website, it was super easy to buy a ticket. You bought it really quickly and the whole experience was immediate and pleasant. You weren't on our site. 
<laughs> you know, because they, they're, there's nothing real behind what they're doing. They're just putting up a, a fake map. They have the tickets they have to sell already or don't, which is even worse. So there's nothing behind it. There's no inventory system. They don't care about you as a customer. You know, they're not keeping the records properly. So it's actually far easier. And it's very it tragic site. when people spend terribly tragic, um, terribly. almost twice as much <coughs> as we charge for well, a ticket. Many more times than twice as much. And then come here and find that the seat yes. doesn't exist. So and or it's been sold multiple times. And besides, you'll miss all our great graphic content. Yeah, because no, our absolutely. website has a lot more yeah, on it. Absolutely, um, and that's that's the. Um, you're right. We're even just completely legal and fine, and they were doing a good job. They'd still miss finding out about another show that's coming, which right. is sad. So when you d work on a show at, uh, let's say, Cap Rep, mm -hmm. um, your staff is designing the playbill. That's right. No, uh, that's, are I, you doing completely different? Yes. Are you doing uh, the the TV ads now in your department with others? Yes, indeed. Well, we're sitting in OSM Studios here, and the OSM staff accompanies us, and they they are the video staff for the commercials. We use a professional audio studio in town uh, called Finger Paint that used to be Cotton Hill for many years for the history buffs out there. And um, it's a very professional operation. The, the two, Capital Rep and Proctors, could not be any different. We, at Proctors, of course, we have not one stick of furniture, not one costume, not, no, not one pot of makeup. And mm -hmm. it's a big, big building. Uh, at the Rep, it's a little tiny building, and it has all of that stuff. So. It's very soup to nuts, hiring the actors, um, uh, auditions, makeup artists, costume, set design, graphic creation. So it's, it's actually quite stimulating to work mm -hmm. for artists because at Proctor's you can often be lost in, again, the grown-up marketing thing and be lost in just you know, working on other people's art. At the rep, we actually get to make things, which is joyous. I, I shouldn't... Uh, forget to mention, of course, that we also have many other departments here. We have the education department, which that, that's worthy of 10 shows all by itself. I mean, what they do, what they've done, what they've been able to accomplish with young people in the region and making sure that they get to see theater and have a real personal relationship. Now, with what it. would your role with education be? So many things. I mean, start with the photography. I photograph the classes, or we have photographers photograph all the classes that come here, or sometimes in the schools. We create all of their materials. There are uh, summer brochures that need to go out, other brochures. It just It's a very busy department. It's very materials hungry. But again, it's great for my artists because they get to make new, new things new and stretch a little bit, exactly. OK, so um, do they have their own web page as well? They do, absolutely. So they're that's another? <laughs> a huge amount of content okay. because of, again, they're dealing with the kids and the classes and curriculums. So there's a ton of content on the website that most people never see because you know, the, you just need that little layer to find out what you're doing with your kids. But if you're an educator, it keeps going and going. Broadway adds to it. If we're doing anything with a major Broadway show, each Broadway show has its own education package if it's not a completely adult show and it wouldn't be appropriate to do so. It's, it's really quite, most theaters, the education department is there to service Broadway. Mm -hmm. And that's all you'll really find out about. You'll just find out there's this element, and it's for Lion King, and it's talking about bullying, or it's talking about this. At Proctor's, we take that ball and run with it in every possible direction. Yes, you, know, you know, we have jazz camps and camera, video camera courses, and we do it in a very different way. As uh, you know, we have a very charismatic and and wide-reaching and wide-ranging CEO. And yes, we, we do. <laughs> and all of this reflects that. And of course, it makes it a wonderful place for a creative person right. to work. So when Proctors took on UPH, yes. it was natural to do um, the at Proctors, very the natural. UPH. The same Palatinos used. It looks beautiful with UPH. Again, this is a very professional font with uh, no flaws at all. So we feel very comfortable going to at the rep and at UPH because it, it represents each, each uh, little letter form there is just, it's just gorgeous. So for those who aren't familiar with these initials, UPH? Universal Preservation Hall, which is a mouthful, hence why it would be far easier in an ad for a jazz show to have, be at UPH. And, and this is a beautiful uh, Gothic beautiful. church yes. 
that um, fortunately has had a lot of stabilization so far and is going to be closed for the next two years That's right. for finishing and fitting up as a theater uh, space. Yeah, we're not coming in, we're coming in to save the day to make it a theater, but we, we certainly didn't save the day initially. That was a, a bunch of really brave and smart and sacrificing people who literally kept the roof up is a beautiful right. metaphor. So I say. saw the case study, and there seems yes. to be a lot of purple in it. Is that one of the colors <laughs> of uh, UPH, do you think? Uh, just uh, we pick <laughs> colors that complement the, their logo is much more colorful than, because they had a colorful logo that was made by a Saratoga company that, and they wanted to keep the elements in that. So we respected that, and it became the bug, like the, um, like the star in the Capitol Repertory Theater logo at the Rep. So we, we respected their little church form shape thing and it led to a very colorful logo. So it actually creates a little bit of a challenge because you can't put it on every different base color. So you have two years to get it all. <laughs> we're very much, as far as branding is concerned, we're already way ahead because they were, there's always the conservative approach where you start with the logo they had and you step it in very slowly, but there really wasn't enough history there for people to be quite that married to anything, so it just seemed absurd to be any slower. And their board didn't care. They they wanted to modernize. They wanted to make things right and to make it uh, uh, easy to see, if you will, and make it part of the family. They see great benefit in being part of the Proctor's family. Now, one of the things you've done recently is to re-photograph the interior of yes. Proctor's. So do you want to talk about that a little well, bit? Well, most photo shoots here, obviously, are just I show up with a camera and take pictures that day and make sure something's clear or clean. This was very different. You can see here in the picture that we have the front of the balcony, and that was the very last phase in a repainting and refinishing of the back mezzanine and downstairs in the back and uh, all of the marble effects in the building and the gold leafing. The last thing was the balcony. So there was one day, only one day, when the balcony was new and golden and the theater was perfectly clean, and these lights were not yet hung, one day. So we dedicated that day to inviting people from uh, town to come in and see it, also inviting press, inviting a few prominent local photographers to interpret it themselves, and I photographed the, the basic package of the pictures that I knew we needed. So now we have pictures for many decades to come in its, literally, its most beautiful form, again, without the lights. The lights make it us, but it's not necessarily the prettiest thing. So right. you can see some of those right now on and our website. And that's gonna look a little more like the gold in, in the rest of the room. Yeah, it'll look uh, like the gold that's in that, uh, in that doorway up there. So it's brighter, it's more yellow. And of course, without smoking in the theater and without being a major movie house, we're not quite the movie house we were, so we'll have far less spilled Coca-Cola over the edges and of course no nicotine. So I think we can expect it to last a very, very long time. Good. Well, I know when there are a lot of people in the theater, you don't always notice all this decoration. That's right. So coming to one of the historical tours that are held from time to time is a good way to kind of drill down on some of the techniques, some of the colors, some of the way it's been all freshened up. Well, people ask me uh, about the tours. I recommend them at least once a week to someone. It's such mm -hmm. a great way to find out about the theater that you love and you guys do such a great job. It's funny, there are a few different tours. There's the history tour, and then there's the Dan Sheehan, our director of operations tech tour, and the Philip Morris uh, colorful tour. So there, it's, a quite, it's quite interesting to take all of the tours. And put you them probably all together. give tours yourself. I, I do my own, yeah. Because I give Simple them too, form, which yeah. seems like sometimes when they can't find anyone else, I get to run the tour. Mine's more in the <laughs> colorful area, well, less facts and figures. But. Good. Well, it's quite an exciting place to be. Yes, it is. Is there anything we haven't talked about that you'd like to bring well, up? Well, just to put, put a pin in this t place in time, you know, it surprises people that we produce our own power here, that we have a, a, an energy plant and we sell uh, hot water and steam to buildings nearby, that we have a heated sidewalk system. You know, we've always been a very, since Phillips' arrival, we've been a very high-tech place. So it's, a, it's kind of a, it's a daily delight to have both this great, history uh, of the theater and the high-tech mix. And I think they make very good bedfellows, as we can see. Uh, even if you uh, talk about something as 
usually uninteresting to people as the fact that we expanded our stage house. Well, okay, well, you could say, well, that allowed, you know, the big shows to come in, uh, Phantom, right? Phantom to, fit, to come in and fit properly. It's so much more than that. It's allowed us to do, one of Philip's dreams is that shows would come here to tech. So between Philip doing this mechanical thing with Dan Chi and our director of operations and making a larger stage house, and then working on uh, legislation, getting tax credits for people to desire to tech shows here. Teching means taking your Broadway show and putting it in a box, basically. Putting it on trucks and getting it out on the road. Um, and now that we, we tech here, it's a matter of course. We're on our third show, and next year, more to come. So it is, again, that melding of this beautiful building that we all respect, that we all love, and then mixing it with high tech, and it's giving it the, li the new life that it deserves. It's not a museum. Well, and the wonderful part is there's something happening here every day, so every the public day. has no excuse but to come and every do day. something. And it's 99% of every theaters in the country, of course, they open a half hour before showtime, and, uh, and they close when the show is over. And that is, as you know, Proctor's is basically open for people to use as, as they wish. You can have your birthday party here. You can have coffee. You can come Get married through, here. Get married. Uh, they're a key <laughs> hall at Proctor's. We didn't even discuss that. It's not as much a performance space, well, but Well, people it is. have gotten married on the stage way People before. have gotten married in the balcony. People have gotten married in the mezzanine. It's, it's but a... But it's almost, we've had haunted tours because yes. we have ghosts. I mean, it's way beyond comprehension. It's very, very easy to have a special story and personal connection to right. Proctor's. Very, very easy. So that's one of the things we hope to explore in this series is yeah. uh, get some members of the public to come and that's share their idea. memories. So. That's a great idea. Richard, you've really enriched um, the environment of communications at Proctor's and do beautiful work. And I hope that the public uh, sees it and appreciates uh, that when they get one of our flyers that there's a tremendous amount of work behind it. And, and, and it's all being done under your direction at this point. So we're just happy to have you here. Thank you. It's a pleasure every day. And. Um, I want to thank all of you for watching today. Um, we're on October 9th, 2015, and we've had Richard Loveridge from the staff at Proctor's, uh, who does just about everything. <laughs> thank you, Karen. Thank you for coming today.